planetary, planetary. Oh, now we're live. Galactic, Power. galactic, yay! Oh, Sorry for the delay, we're having connection the problems. You notice this? <laughs> what? Notice what? What? That Tashi's always singing when we go live. So, it's going to be my thing from now on. Last time you were singing something about French water. French water, French that water. Every time I clicked. Oh. The <laughs> yeah. And then Sarah would be like, that's right! Like, Because she forgot. So high. She forgot she was drinking Perrier, and it was French-themed. And I'm like, Sarah, you're oh, drinking right. Perrier. You're, you're in the gang. We were watching, um, how do you say, a eh, by Master's Hangout. All right, I think I shared it wherever, everywhere I needed to be shared, I think. Cool. I think. Okay, so hi, everybody. If anybody is watching this now or later, we're only lovers left in the library. We are a romance book club, and we read vaginal fantasies, romance book fic, usually romance in a particular genre. And my name is Christina. I'm from Puerto Rico. And uh, I'm in San Juan, Puerto Rico now. <laughs> Somebody else introduced them, so. All right, I'm Andrea. I'm in Charlottesville, Virginia. But I met Christina in Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Tishai. I'm from Puerto Rico, but I am currently in Brooklyn, New York. Because I'm cool like that. Yeah, we're all basically we all met in, in PR, but now we're in different oh, places. I've never met Tashi. Well, I mean, <laughs> soon, someday. Someday, soon, soon. Thank you. <laughs> okay, what are you drinking? I'm having fruity wine because nature. You know, just imagine going out into nature well, and picking wine from the trees. Given the theme of our book, I am drinking Bold Rock Virginia Apple Cider while dressed in my apple dress and wearing my leaves. <laughs> I am basically I'm... an apple tree. <laughs> oh, leaves are killing me. You are. <laughs> oh, this, this outfit makes, it's, it makes all the sense now. Um, I'm drinking red wine because it's from nature and I'm pretending it's the blood of my enemies. <laughs> what else do you have? You have props. You have props. Oh, I also have props. I have a familiar <laughs> for when I cast my magic, and I have a sword. I've always yeah. been really curious. Like I don't understand what a familiar is. What is a familiar? He he's like a spirit animal slash spirit guide. Usually, it's uh, sort of a representation of your inner self that helps you connect with magic. So sometimes having a familiar helps you be more in tune when you're trying to. Like use any sort of spells and magic. Oh, and stuff. I read a book. I read a book. Uh, <laughs> this, the wizard had a cat who was his familiar, but the cat hated him. <laughs> hated him. <laughs> he his cat. He was like, I, I, I'm plotting your demise as we speak. And he really, he really was. I won't, I won't say who, what the book title is because I kind of spoiled something. But the cat really hated him. He was just, I, the cat could talk also. The cat could talk. You're just ruining this book for everybody. Don't yeah. ever say what it's called. Um, There's I feel more like than that. Cthulhu is in it, and he's I like Australian. Like... Get it? Cause he's <laughs> from Down Under. Uh huh. I feel like I once read that familiars could also be like witches or wizards that are being punished for something. No, he was like a regular cat. He was like a regular cat, but like he could talk. He could talk. Anyway, yeah. before Probably we could... someone's familiar, I'd be an asshole. <laughs> Well, I don't think they have a choice. I don't think he had a choice in being a familiar, so he was just, like, angry with him the whole time. So, okay, before we continue, I just want to give a shout-out to our lost lover. She's in a different part of the library. She's in the academic uh, section. She's uh, studying Sarah, the library. <laughs> Sarah, who wasn't able to join us today, but it's because <laughs> she's getting her education, and uh, she's uh, hard at work studying for a doctoral degree, but it's not the same without you, Sarah. This is We miss you. you. Cheers to Sarah! <laughs> Cheers. Oh, Andrew Deuce. Andrew said, don't all cats plot the demise of their owners? Good point. That's true. Good point. I don't know. I just I didn't know if that was something. Okay, so the book that we read, right in the nick of time. <laughs> so good. Uh, Naomi Novik's Uprooted. And Love it was a, a forum pick. It was a forum pick. People like voted for it. I I really wanted to read this book because I already had it in print. But oh boy, oh boy. Yeah. So happy, so happy this book won. 
Right? It was good. It was good. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Okay, so the book is about magic and nature <laughs> and words, and that's why we have flowers. Like that's why. I, <laughs> that's why I made a. I went to, I went to Amigo and I bought this wine. <laughs> and Wait, I bought a, that... a bouquet of flowers. And the lady who's checking me out, to, I mean, she's like, she's uh, checking me out. She's like looking at me <laughs> like I'm about to have a really romantic evening. <laughs> I'm like in a way, yeah, in a way. Nice. That's funny. Um, I was like, I was gonna ask if those were real. These are fake as all hell. I'm pretty sure I bought these at Eclairs about three years ago. Yeah, no, these are real. These are the ones from Amigo. I think it's from the tree in front of my house. And actually, now it has occurred to me that were that tree full of magic? <laughs> <laughs> like, that was a bad tree to pick, guys. I really should have gone farther from my house. <laughs> corrupted. You might yeah, have been corrupted. Right there. That tree is going to come get you, girl. Okay, so we also, we also talked about having wizard names because in the book there are wizards, and each wizard has a title. He's got, like, title. And the, the main character, uh, well, the love, in, the love in... I don't even know if I want to call him a love interest, but the main wizard character, his name is Sarkin, but his, his wizard name is the dragon. So yeah. we were trying to come up with... We were trying to come up with... Uh, Wizard names. So my, I came up with the Gorgon because Medusa snake hair, and uh, I don't remember. I remember. Uh, I did not remember mine, but I just googled it. And no, <laughs> it was Loxy Elephant. Cause yeah, it was I remember Loxie it was Loxy for sure. Elephant. But the full name is Loxodonta. Ah, okay. That's a scientific name for elephants, which are the best. You know, actually, elephants are kind of like those tree people because they just never. They just chill them. out. Uh, I was gonna say they never ever forget, like the tree people, like. The tree people. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, oh they never forget. <laughs> That's really okay. That's actually a really good choice as far as having it. It was totally intense. It just occurred to me. <laughs> good guess. Good good okay. choice. Good choice. Did though. you think? Of, did you guys think of like a specialty that what would be your power? Um. Wait. Grabbing. <laughs> You know, like Alosha, she had the sword, and she was like a well, not what a welder. What was she? Um, <laughs> she was a, a swordsmith, a blacksmith. Yeah. Right. She was cool. But I can't think of what I do. I don't. Um, know. Oh, Atisha, you were the fury. The fury. Yeah, I'm the fury because <laughs> I'm mad all the time and I hate everybody. Um. So I figured if I am going to be a wizard and if my name is going to be the fury that I am really good at reading people's emotions that they're trying to hide and then using them or manipulating them so like if I know someone is secretly upset about something I can use that to like get secrets out of them to solve problems and like defeat bad guys but I also just get mad at people all the time because I know what they feel and I know when they're liars. Hey, Sarah's watching. She messaged us. She said, you guys look good. Yay! Yeah. Mm. Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so I have no idea what my specialty would be. If I'm no. the Gorgon. Yeah. I don't either. I feel like I need a dragon to take me on as his apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like, oh, like you, you probably really want him, Christina. I feel like Loxie would probably be very, very smart because of not forgetting anything and also much stronger than you appear. So, like, you seem like a normal witch, like, hey, girl, hi, but you're actually just like, ah, all day. Was I not just, this is one of the things my teenagers say at the at the organization <laughs> that I work at. <laughs> what? What yeah. thing? I thought you were going to say it. Say it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like what she just said. I just, I can't talk like that. I'm trying. <sighs> okay. Well, I'll get just keep <laughs> the that cider. Maybe later. <laughs> It'll slip out. And yeah. um, okay. if, and then if Christina's gonna be a Gorgon, a Gorgon. Oh, yeah. no idea. You're also very, Christina's very knowledgeable about st about stuff. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you would just have the ability to cast a lot of spells, but your innate ability might be being able to freeze people in their tracks when they're about to attack you. Okay. Not necessarily turn them to stone, but freeze them and or, like, freeze their powers so they can't have any effect against you. I like how we're all basically super smart because Sarah's the sage. Isn't she the sage because she's studying yeah. something? <laughs> our <laughs> no, our power is knowledge, damn it. We're just knowledge wizards. Yeah, we're just we're all really smart. smart. Bitches. 
Sarah can tell the future. <laughs> bitch is up there. Smart bitch wizards. That's what I'm talking about. I'd read that. <laughs> okay. So speaking of, so overall impressions. I know you guys really like the book. I liked it too. I liked it too. What did, okay, Tasha, what like did you think of the book? You though. Okay. Um, what did I think of the book? I <laughs> I wish I hadn't had so much stuff to do so that I could have gone through the book faster. Um, there are a lot of plot points in the story. I liked it, but it kept it kept being that something would happen and I would think that was the main thing and then something else would happen and I would think that would be the main thing and something else would happen. So there are a lot of layers to this story. There are a lot of... There's not just one climax. <laughs> there's a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> you know, um, power, soft power. There's there's a lot of like there's an ebb and flow as far as story going. Um, but I I liked it. I thought it was very interesting. I liked that there were a lot of female characters as opposed to some of the other stories we've had where we only had maybe one or two. There's a couple of different female characters we can relate to in this story. And, and she was legit the main character. Yes. She was legit the main character, well, and all the all the secondary, the yeah, and all the secondary characters also had kind of like rounded stories. They they had rounded personalities. They weren't just there to sort of stand by the main character. They moved the plot along. They moved the action along. They were. I wanted to know more about all these secondary characters too, which to me always is the the sign of a good story. Uh, uh, okay, go on. <laughs> you don't need to agree with my point of view. I'm just well, saying. I'm just saying, like I was, I was with you right up until then because I have issues about with liking you. secondary characters, or you wish there were less. We'll we'll get to this. I want to know. I I don't want to jump into my thing, so I'll just leave it I at that. Jump into your thing. I give I give the book an 87 percent out of 100. 87. <laughs> That's a I B give, plus. I give it a B plus. <laughs> Okay, what about you, Andrea? What would you think? I, see, I think what I most liked is that it just reminded me of the books that I was really into when I was younger, except, you know, with sex added in. <laughs> no, I definitely not have sex in them. Um, but it reminded me a lot of the like, magic books that I used to be, like, really, really into. Um, and I really liked how it just, like, slowly... Like, when the book started, I didn't even know, like, what kind of a book it was going to be. And mm -hmm. I think that goes along with what you were saying. Like, my perception of what the book was about kept changing. But I liked that. And I liked that it would have its, like, super intense parts. And then it would have its, like, chill, like, learning to cook or learning this, like, one spell parts. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I yeah, I personally love it. Raise your hand, hand if you totally tried Vanastalem in the morning because <laughs> you were rushing. I did. I did. Swear I, to God. I really loved it, and I thought the main character was great, and I really loved Dragon, and he totally reminded me of Mr. Rochester, who's like <laughs> heart throb. Yes, I know. I have a thing for like. I feel like that's your go-to. You're like, who, Mr. Rochester? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, Mr. Darcy. <laughs> no, that's exactly what I was thinking, but I was thinking more of... No, but I was, of... Thinking, I was thinking more Mr. Rochester because he's, like, alone in this, like, empty, like, palace, and he's sort of, like, whatever, like, you don't know anything. You're just this, like, lowly person I have over, and then he's like, well, I guess you're kind of smart, and I guess you're kind of, like, worth talking to, and then it's like, boom, I want to have sex with you, but, oh, wait, I'm, like, a hundred years old and, like, a super wizard, and you're this, like... Wait, wait, we're back to dragon. We're not talking about Mr. Rochester. I was like, Mr. Rochester is a hundred years old. What? what are you talking about? I mean, you know, in spirit, he's, bar he's basically a crotchety old man. No, he said that. He's, like, hundreds of years old. Yeah. I know. He says, well, actually, I'm a hundred. She's like, shut up. Stop. Yeah. And she's I'm like, so much older than you. She's like, the forest. You know, she's like a, she's this, like, ground girl, you know, who has, like, roots to, like, and he's, like, up top over here, aloof, like, not, I don't know. <laughs> I just thought, like, I just thought Mr. Rochester, whatever. I thought Mr. Darcy and Hal from Hal's Moving Castle, because Ooh, they're both kind of, like, Hal. Damn. They're both kind of like oh. rude to the to the girl at first or, or flippant or just completely I mean, egotistical. I kind of character <laughs> pretty common in like eighteenth century British novels. But if a wizard who takes a girl, he's gotta be he's gotta be a total bitch to her, apparently, in order for well, this yeah, to work. If he's like, 
hey girls, come here and you get food and you get shelter and you don't really gotta work, you just sort of study and I'm not gonna like force myself on you. Most girls would probably be like, oh my god, me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> over here, over here. Oh and, like, and then the development of like their chemistry. Like I liked her at first, she's like, you're like weird and I hate being with you and then it's like, ooh, I kinda like doing magic with you. <laughs> I feel some of the magic rubbing off on me. And then it's like, yeah. boom, magic shattering and, like, chemistry. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do I do like that she's she when she starts doing magic with him, it's like, uh, he's fighting me. And then it's like, oh, we're harmonizing. Like, oh, he's feeding my magic. Ooh, magic everywhere. And she just starts seeing magic everywhere and not even really having to think about it. It becomes this whole, like, intrinsic, instinctual, sexy thing. Anyway. Christina, Sarah, what did you say? Mr. too. Mr. Rachadasi. Mr. Dorchester. Mr. Dorchester. Mr. Dorchester. Mr. Dorchester. Three Mr. Darcy's versus one Mr. Rochester. Whatever, guys. Jane Eyre is better than mix it up. We'll, <laughs> ask, we'll have to ask Sarah. She'll be the she'll be the tiebreaker. I just told you that Sarah said that it's Mr. Darcy. Oh. Do you see Mr. Darcy? I didn't see. Yeah, oh, well, you lose. Sorry, <laughs> you lose. Okay, what I That's, think I really yeah. enjoyed this. I really enjoyed the story too. But they were part. Yeah. I just I really I liked every single thing that you guys said, but there were parts that I felt really underwhelmed, and one of them was definitely the the romance of it. I it's not that I I did I like their chemistry. But it wasn't like the focus of the book, is how I saw it. It, it's wasn't, like, it wasn't. I just, I did feel like it was a slow burn, but it was a burn that I didn't even, I didn't even see at, at at points. Like I didn't, I didn't get what she liked about him. I get it that their magic like melded, you know. But I mean, I was, I was put off by him calling her an idiot. Let's be real. I didn't like yeah. it that she yeah. would, would call her an idiot, and you know that he would talk down to her and. And uh, I think that's one of the things that dissatisfied me a little bit is that it, it when it ends, um, there's like a Mulan ending where it's like, "Well, come and meet my father." Here's how I saw it. Here's how I saw it. It's like he wouldn't. No, wait, wait, wait. But the thing is, I like there's parts where they fight with like they fight as wizards together. But I, ne I mean, in the heat of the moment, he treated her as an equal. But then, like, in their private moments, I don't feel like that was the... I didn't feel like that was the case. I mean, even at the end, he he was kind of, like, a little bit proud. And uh, I wanted to see him not be an asshole. And that's... I mean, that's where the book <laughs> stops for me. That's where the book stops. I and I, like, okay. I took his assholeness as not... Like, I don't know, like, every time that he would be, like, oh, like, you stupid girl, like, what have you done now? I didn't take it as him actually, like, insulting her. It's more like, that's just like, those are the words he uses. Like, I feel like that's how he talks to everyone. And I just saw it more as like, oh my god, like, you crazy female that's like insane and I love it. What did you run off and do now? Like, that's how <laughs> I... Mean, I, I think it, it grows on him. It grows on him. <clears throat> I mean, I, as someone who does find myself, who does find herself constantly attracted to assholes, Guilty. You. <laughs> it's what it's it's what happens. Yeah, it's, we're defending him. Yeah, whatever. It's, it's, it's what happens. Eventually, once you develop a very particular kind of exchange with a person, them being like, "I oh, piece of shit," doesn't necessarily mean that they're calling you that. However, talking on Christina's point of view, he never actually apologizes for no, being a piece a of shit. He I mean, never, he but, never, uh, I don't ever, I don't think I that never the end is like, oh, we're in love and we're going to get married now. Like, I think the end is just like, all right, I guess we're going to, like, see where this goes now. The book is just they're having, like, chemistry. It's not actually, like, yeah. I don't know. I feel like yeah, we don't also, feel, like, the emotional part as much because that's going to come after they fucking, like, save the world. And then, like, that's over. And now they're going to chill mm -hmm. at her mom's house and, like, have dinner and, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can still be like, hey, yeah, he he haven't seen you in a while, PT dubs. Yeah. Sorry, it was kind of an asshole that entire time. And then That's we had felt, moments, I just felt like and I was, was just like... Aside from the sex scene, there was, like, 
<laughs> I felt I wanted more of a romantic payoff. That being said, I did think their chemistry was cool. I wish they had I wish they had talked more. There was a lot of emphasis on words and saying things together, but I didn't really see them ever having a conversation where I could see that she really liked him. You yeah. know, I, I get it that, you know, there was chemistry. There was magic chemistry, but I mean, it's not that I need to see them having a conversation, but everything was so in the moment, you know, like, oh, mm -hmm. you're learning this, and you're doing that, and God, what are you doing? I guess that I just saw more, like, whenever their magic connected, it was like their souls were, like, I don't know. I Soul bonding? Like, so, the sensei, they, they, they knew each other already, so there is yeah. no need to look each other up on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Soul bonding. <laughs> Why are you hitting yourself with a lizard? <laughs> Remember the dinosaurs? I'm walking into his heart. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I mean, granted, like they were able to do magic together that like they weren't supposed to be able to do. Like those times when she was like doing an illusion and then she would like actually like it was a walkie-talkie him in the illusion. Like nobody else yeah. has ever done this in the magic world. So if that's not yeah. proof of some sort of connection. I I kind of read I kind of read that as being more her than him. I feel like she had talent. She had I talent. feel like she I feel like it was more her. Guys, it's very so slowly hard. like if we ever meet a dragon, he's clearly he's mine to keep because you guys yeah, you can <laughs> It's fine. I'll just like you can take him and I'm going to take his library. He can move in with you and then I'll move into his tower. Um, well, let's talk library about the is, like, point, part of the package you talking about. No, Andrea, you can either have the dragon or you can have the library. You can't have both. Okay, wait. So let's talk about the plot. So at this okay. point, there, there's been a, a lot of spoilers up until this point, but this is like going to get Sorry, super, audience. super spoilery. So if you're if you made it this far into the ramble, then uh, it's like a section of the wood for, for ramblers. Uh, where to find the dragon. We're going to talk about to. stuff that happens, spoilers, and uh, if you want to go ahead and like stop, then I guess now would be the time. Stop. Yeah, I Take think we can, read the book. It is like too long for us to do a like plot by plot synopsis. Mm -hmm. I feel like no, we no, should no, but like go the, into the main. Okay, I can I can give the main plot points. Do it. Okay, so the town has a dragon who takes women every ten years to oh, stay with him. No, People think by that. <laughs> People think that he's ravishing them, but really we find out that it's more of a mentor relationship. Then we find out that the main character's best friend... I love how we're all avoiding saying her name because we don't know Agnieszka? how... Agnieszka? Agnieszka? <laughs> no, no, it's um, Agnieszka. Agnieszka. Uh, her name is Agnieszka. Agnieszka. So I listened Agnieszka. to the audiobook while I was... I was okay. uh, Give me the name pronunciations. Agnieszka and... Kasha. And, Ka and okay, Ka Kasha. Kasha? Kasha. Kasha. Okay, Kasha. Agnieszka, Kasha, the dragon. Okay, gotcha. Everybody else is really simple. <laughs> the, those were the two, like... I don't remember anyone else's Can name. I just say that I names. really liked their friendship? And I thought it yes. was going to okay. be one of those plot points where it was, like, the beginning of the book, but I like that it continued throughout the whole book. Yeah, that's, I, that's something we can definitely talk about, because I, I loved... That was my number one of, of the book, was that for me it wasn't a romance novel. For me it was a, like, sisterhood novel. So... Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, Dragon takes girls every ten years to have them as mentors. People think he ravishes them. He doesn't. Everyone thinks that Kasha is going to be taken because she's beautiful and smart and amazing. She's not. He takes Agnieszka because it turns out she has magic. No, she is, but she doesn't have magic, so he doesn't take her. She doesn't, yeah, okay, exactly. She doesn't have magic. He doesn't take her. He takes Agnieszka. So, teaching, yeah. teaching, 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 fighting, fighting, teaching, teaching, teaching. Um, Kasha gets kidnapped, Agnieszka goes and finds her, turns out she's strong, turns out the main villain in the story is the trees. Trees are super evil, they kidnap people, they poison the fruit, they poison the water, they turn people crazy and into monsters, and you're like, I'm gonna go for a walk in the woods, and then you never come back, and no one ever knows what's or happening. You come back, but you're soulless. The praying or you're changed, <laughs> exactly. Oh, there's there a praying mantises. Manti? Giant ones. There are giant praying mantises in the woods. There are the version of Ents that exist in this story. So, like, big tree monster things. There's boars that are huge and crazy. 
basically anything that can be corrupted, that's what they call it. It's things being corrupted in the wood. That's what happens. You can't even drink the water. You can't really be near it. It's going to affect you. So they save Kasha. Turns out they can do the one thing no one's ever been able to do, which is take the corruption out of people and put them back to normal. And when they do that, they destroy the tree that's linked to them in the wood. And they've never been able to destroy trees before. Because the people were inside the trees. Exactly. When It's not just that the wood corrupts people. It's that the wood kidnaps people and puts them into trees like little pod people. And no, the like tree Bugs grows. Bunny, Bunny and the carrot? Like, that's what oh, I was imagining. Yes. Uh, Bugs Bunny and the carrot. People. Yes, carrot people. So that's already about three plot points. What's happening now? The queen, who is the mother of, like, the prince, and obviously the queen. You don't need too many details. There's, uh, uh, the shake. There's the like, mother of the prince. <laughs> the mother of the prince. Um, <clears throat> she was believed to have run away 20 years ago to join a, a neighboring kingdom's prince and started this whole big rivalry. Um, she was in the wood, and they decide they're going to go try to save her. So that's another plot point. This does happen. There's more wars. They save the queen. A lot of people die. A lot of people die. Guess what? Queen wasn't saved. Queen's a, like a bad guy. I feel like, I feel like we need to mention that it wasn't their idea to save the queen. Like the prince made them go and like get all these people killed just to save the queen. That's true. The prince is like, I miss my mom. And they're like, that's not a good idea because people are going to die. And he's like, I'm the prince. Doesn't matter. Let's go save my mom. <laughs> Or we're going to burn uh, Kasha at the stake. And Agnieszka's like, ah, 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 ah. okay, let's go. So they go, they save the queen, try to figure out how to, like, cleanse her. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. More fighting, more magic. And then eventually they there's a... Court. They have to go to a court where the trial doesn't ever really happen. They just sort of mention it, but the trial doesn't really happen. I don't know. It's weird. And then there's got there's this, like... Godforsaken apocalyptic showdown in the wood, where because the queen has become the sort of representative of the wood, she she's taken on the personality of this other queen who had been murdered years ago. Did Christina go away? She gone? Yeah, she went away, and then I think she came back. I oh, I think she's about to pop back in. Yeah. So just continue. Okay. With the okay. <clears throat> so basically, it turns out that the undercurrent of this entire story is that years ago, the tree people tried to marry their queen with one of the human princes, like one of the human kings, and they were going to form an alliance between the tree people and the humans so they could exchange information and magic, and so the tree people could remember what it was like to be humans because they'd been so magic for so long they were forgetting, and so that the humans would be able to learn new things from the tree people. ¿Qué pasa? What happens? <laughs> the tree people couldn't just give humans this kind of knowledge because it turns out people suck. And so <laughs> the humans wanted to abuse this magic and the ability to live longer and all that stuff. And so when the king dies, they turn on the tree queen and they bury her alive along with the body of the king. Yep. She gets, she doesn't die. She's trapped there. I'm but sorry, am I back? Am I yeah, you're back. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened. I, I, I froze, and then it just, the connection got dropped. It's okay. <laughs> we're almost done with the... Yeah, we're almost done with plot summary. <laughs> um, so, so basically, the driving force behind the wood this entire time has been this vengeful spirit of the wood queen who was trapped in the tomb of her husband who managed to get out and decided to seek revenge because when she went back to the, to the woods to reunite with her family... She realized that the, the humans had, had killed them, had cut down all these trees, had cut mm -hmm. down all her family. They became trees. Yeah, exactly. Because the, the tree people, when they realized they couldn't have an alliance with the humans, decided they were going to just let, let that beef go. They were just going to eat this magic fruit and drink this magic water and become trees because they just wanted to live and dream and be peaceful. But again, humans had to come fuck it up, and they're like, nah, tree people, nah, chop them down. And so they, like, set fire to the wood and kill all these magical tree people who were just literally chilling and providing <laughs> fruit and stuff. And then Wood Queen comes back and is like, holy shit, my family's dead. I don't know what to do. Some of them were still around, so she decides she's going to try to join them. 
But at that moment, two dudes come in and they're like, "We're gonna chop some trees, we're gonna chop some wood, chop, chop, chop," and she just like goes into a rage. Yeah, she loses it. She loses. She it. loses her shit. She goes and kills one guy and then grabs the other guy and like shoves him into the tree he chopped down. And that's when the tree hugs the human guy and starts growing because it absorbs his spirit. And that's when she realizes, "Yo, this is like." This is awesome. I can use them as fertilizer. And so... <laughs> they're not like her family trees. Those are the corrupted trees. Exactly. But what happens is when she grabs humans who don't want to, like, accept this fate, they don't want to live there, they don't want to become part of a tree, and they freak out and fight it, the trees become corrupted. And that's when the wood became evil. So this entire time, it's basically uh, a woman done wrong who wanted to join her family but could not and decided to take revenge on the people who fucked up her life and from there it spread and it just became it was more also the theme of sisterhood and friendship between women plays very strongly in the story yeah cuz so she the entire to unite with her sister exactly the the entire time agnieszka's trying to save kasha and and go back and reunite with her and save her family the Wood Queen, who's the villain this entire time, was just trying to find a way to get back to her sister, who's the one who she was trying to return to when things didn't work out with the Human King. Mm -hmm. So in the end, it was almost like, if any of you have watched Sailor Moon, it was like... <laughs> <laughs> I totally yeah. like it. <laughs> it's like It's like when Serena tries to save Galactica. Tries to save Gal Galactica? Galaxia? Galaxia. Galaxia tries to save her through forgiveness and love rather than destroying her. Agnieszka accepts the Wood Queen and accepts her rage and, and explains to her the only way you can move on and rejoin your family is to, is to forgive and to let go of this rage. And eventually she does. And then Agnieszka becomes this like magic wood fairy witch who like just makes friends with all the monsters who are in the wood and spreads love and joy. And it's all super peaceful and awesome. Yeah, because then, like, what she does at the end is she just goes around, like, finding the corrupted trees, and she burns them, and then she plants, like, non-corrupted trees. Because and... mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she, she tries to purge them. If, if the person hasn't been in the tree for too long, she can save the person and save the tree, and it's fine. But um, if they've been there for more than two weeks, it's like, there's no point. There's, you can't get them out, basically. Also, now I have the Sailor Moon song stuck in. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. It was super. Wasn't it Super S with Galaxia? Well, not Super S, like Sailor uh, Star, right? Sailor Star. Sailor Stars. Yeah, that was the that was the season. Galaxia arc. Uh, I don't know. Correct Pour me. Pour one out for my homies whose star seeds got stolen. Drink to that. Cheers for Sailor Moon. Making connections. Woo <laughs> Well, okay. So that's the plot in a very, very large nutshell. The thing is, I thought that the plot meandered a lot. It, there was a lot of points. You're totally right. There was a lot of points to it, but, I mean, getting into the book for some reason was difficult for me. I After the first two chapters were, like, the toughest. And then after that, it was smooth sailing. And then we get into the middle of the book where I feel like nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. And, uh... It's only until... Is that when they're, like, preparing for the war? <sighs> no. It's, it's <laughs> like, when... I don't, I don't know exactly at one point, but I just kind of started because losing interest. But then Prince Marek shows up. and Fucking starts, Marek. I, I call him Marek. Is it Marek? Like, I say Marek. I don't know. Marek. No, oh. oh, I say Marek. Marek. I'll say Marek. I mean, who cares? <laughs> uh, and I know that this is not going to be very popular... Opinion. But Prince Marek was one of my favorite characters because I loved how he was wrecking shit. Like I loved it. <laughs> I loved that he was he was he was, the wood. Okay, here's the other thing. I didn't feel like the wood had as much presence as it could have. I mean, it was like kept at bay, which was cool. <coughs> but Marek was like the closest thing to an actual antagonist that the book had, like a human antagonist aside from the Wood Queen. And I liked him. I liked how complicated he was. I liked how. He was so ambitious, and he was just a, such an idiot about it. But he wanted to be king, but he he wanted to save his mom, and he was 
he was kind of like crushing on Agnieszka, but didn't want to really outright say it. He's like, oh, um, I thought he was into Kasha. <laughs> oh, it was it Kasha? Was it Kasha who he wanted to marry or Agnieszka? He he said he would marry. He said he would marry her to make things like smooth sailing in the kingdom. But I thought he was checking Kasha out the whole time. He's like, you kind of look like my mom if she were a tree. <laughs> <laughs> And everyone's like, mm. she is a tree, kind of. Kind Everyone's of. like, she's she's gonna be put to trial, and he's like, wait. wait. Oh, okay. And then this is my other, I mean, other. <laughs> okay. I wanted, I really wanted more magic. I wanted so much more magic. I know magic was everywhere, but I, I wanted the teaching of the. Maybe this is me being a teacher, but I and <laughs> needing a lot of. And needing a lot of uh, a lot of examples, a lot of uh, you know assessment, maybe I don't know. But I know think what? that's the way it would have been if she hadn't been the kind of person who's like, I'm just gonna feel my way through everything. Like you know what I mean? Like he couldn't yeah. teach her shit because it wouldn't work. Like she just yeah. had to feel the magic and like stomp the yeah. earth. I no, could. What I mean that. is, <clears throat> he was the magic. I I just feel like when he was teaching her the magic that I wish. That there would have been some exposition where he would explain how it worked, you know? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree because the yeah. words were like, they were very complicated and they kept making an emphasis on him being like, the structure and the pronunciation yeah, is so important. I expected him He's, to, to yeah. explain the crap out of it, at least in one paragraph where she would like interrupt it or something. But then that didn't <clears throat> happen. That didn't happen. Yeah. Because he was all like, this phrase is very interdental, so you need to use the tip of the tongue. <laughs> yeah. It was the syllables. It was so the emphasis on, like, the syllables and, like, the correct, like, order of syllables. And she was like, eh, I think I missed a syllable here. The assonance of this part. And she's just like, hey, but it's it, but it, tree, tree, tree. And then it would sort of <laughs> work. <laughs> In the palace, and they're like, "You can't do magic," and she's like, "Stomp fucking earthquake on you all." <laughs> okay, okay, this is my other thing. This is my other thing. Okay, so she's got talent. She's got magic talent. She is like raw magic talent. But I feel like at the end of the book, she is like this like boss. She's like this boss ass bitch at magic for real. She is like. <clears throat> And like uncorrupting people. <laughs> I mean, that's how I imagine her, you know, like doing the Jedi kind of like. If you liked it, then you should have put fruit in it. But uh, I did <laughs> feel like. I, I didn't it. feel like there was. <laughs> I just heard that. There was no okay. transition between her learning phase and her bad boss phase. Exactly. I just feel like, you know, that there was a part in the. Mi there was a part <laughs> where they were waiting for the trial that I felt. I okay. If I was gonna hate one part of the book, it was definitely that, it, and I call it the mean Which girl like going part. To parties. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like. I mean, I really tried to. I'm like Christina. Be fair. I felt like it added nothing to the story except that they were just waiting, and like she never went to the library until she had to. She wanted to look through the books in the library. Like I didn't feel like. <laughs> I didn't feel like she practiced magic enough to to be as sophisticated as she was at the end of the at, at the end of it. Like I feel like she blundered a lot, and she did she did um she did get her groove, but it was it was like you suck. Oh, you're super good now. Like you suck. Yeah. You make mistakes. You're actually pretty good. So like okay, now you're intentionally. Okay, stupid. but to be fair, I feel like some people are like that. I mean, like my sister had never done fencing in her life, and she went to, like, one lesson, and then it was, like, boom, three lessons later, she was on the PR national team. Like, some people <laughs> are just like that. Like, they go from right. sucking to being, like, amazing in, like, two seconds. No, yeah, but I just think like, the amount of spells that she knew <clears throat> and, like, the amount of power that she was able to harness I into feel animal, I feel like... I feel I don't know. I feel like that was a little bit I mean, unrealistic. In, just, her <laughs> in her defense, in her defense of uh, magic acquisition, she wasn't doing magic <clears throat> the way Dragon was doing magic, though. Yeah, exactly. She was literally... Baba Yaga magic. Like that would be yeah. old magic. Baba Yaga, by the way, audience, is a, a supposedly a fictional fantasy witch in this story who everyone talks about as a legend, but it turns out was actually a real woman, and Agnieszka finds her spell book, and the spells that Dragon has never been able to do, she can do them, because she has this, like, earth magic influence from having been raised in the valley that was close to the wood. 
Right. So even though the wood is corrupt and evil, this like source of magic that used to be pure, that used to belong to the tree people, is almost a part of everyone in the village where she grew up because she's uh, connected to, to the land. Then she becomes uprooted and is taken to the tower. Get it? Okay, check this out. Oh, the title oh. connection. Oh, yeah, but, good job. Go, yeah. go star. Go star for your connection. <laughs> but but I figured I figured even though I th I did think it was silly that she went from not really knowing too much to suddenly she's like Super Saiyan. Um, <laughs> there the, the way th she had already she had always known some magic though because they do say like oh yeah I always thought it was weird when you were a kid that like you could do these things like in the woods mm -hmm. like they do exactly. acknowledge that she's always had it it's just that. She didn't know like what to do with it, so I saw it more as like all of a sudden she realized what she had to do to tap into that, and so after that it was just like smooth sailing. Like she just had yeah. to. Think that. I mean, and it's it's almost like it's almost like if you if you find one thing that you're kind of really good at, and if that then became the way to channel magic, like if Christina in you making pies, you could actually cast spells in the pies you were making, even though you weren't really good at magic, oh, but then that became the way you did it. With her, it was like traipsing through the woods and picking flowers and singing songs and her okay, I have an issue I have an issue with that also. I feel like All right, all right. I was oh, I'm sorry. I have I have like I love the book. It, it's, there were just things I'm like I nitpick at, and one of the reasons why I didn't like Agnieszka as a main, I didn't like her at all. Like I didn't relate to her. I didn't like her complete lack of ambition when it came to magic. First of all, I liked Alosha more. You didn't have to do any kind of uh, you didn't have to do any kind of trade. You were just <laughs> born immortal. Like what? She was so unhappy about that. I'm like stop. Bay is is immortal too. So oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, she, but like, she didn't realize like it wasn't until her like village was in danger that she was like, Oh wait, I see now how this could be useful. Yeah. Like she was just immature and it took like <clears throat> something like that to show her, you know, all right, yeah. I guess. But I just feel like it just she was so resistant. She was so resistant to yeah. to doing her to doing magic. I mean I get it that it was hard for her to do dragon's magic because it was his style and it wasn't necessarily <laughs> her style you know that it was it, it wasn't the way that she would do it and that's why it wasn't working but even when she kind of like got her she found her niche a little bit she refused she refused well, a wizard name she didn't want a wizard name and I thought that was really like uppity and no, bitchy I saw, it, I saw it as like when people get married like I don't want to change my name just because I got married she didn't want to change her name just because she became a wizard she likes her name. I like my name. I Who the fuck likes like the name? Are you serious? Are you serious? Likes <laughs> 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 Agnieszka as a name. And then the thing is that there are other characters that have like amazing wizard names. Come on, Falcon, Dragon, the Sword. The yeah, sword. but you know they were gonna call her Fumblefoot or some shit. They were gonna give her some really bad, like <laughs> Dirty Dirty Debbie. Dirty Debbie was to be her wizard name, and then she's gonna be stuck with it forever because the girl was always covered in mud. I just felt like that was real uppity of her. I mean, she's always she had always been uppity from the beginning of the story, and I just felt like el colmo, el holy colmo que no quiere un nombre. What's that? <laughs> but so, okay, I'm, not, I'm just saying that that's her. That's I'm not under. She is under no obligation uh, to <clears throat> for me to like her. I don't have to like the main character. I don't have to like her at all. I just I, I she was the vessel through which the story was told. But I didn't I didn't like her. I didn't like. her her as a person. I don't think we could have been friends, because I would have been like, I don't get you. I don't get you. Yeah. I, I can I see get her. I got it. everybody else except for, I got everybody else for her. I got I got Prince Marek more than I got her. That's I like... I enjoyed his carnage, and like, when they went into that wood, and I did like that. I liked the, all the stuff that went down in the wood, how it was awful, how the the author didn't hold back at all. Like, it was like the... Oh, Decapitation. Shit it was. It went down. It was just amazing. I loved it. I loved every single. It went down. <laughs> so many people die. So Who many that? people Who die. Who likes as their name? She's like, my name is fine. I'm like, of course, of course you think that. I'm my name is I was saying that to the book. I said, of course, of course, she would say something like that because that's. But you need to. I mean, it's the same. It's the same sort of idea that's been introduced to us from the beginning, where she was very like rooted to her beliefs and her ideals, and she didn't want to leave her village, and, like, the difference between her and, like, Kasha is that when Agnieszka finds out she has magic, she's very resistant to it, she, like, 
doesn't know how to accept it because this whole time she was just accepting of the fact that she was going to be a normal village girl and it's all very weird and new to her. Whereas as soon as Kasha realizes that she can get stabbed and she's fine, she's yeah. like, give me a fucking sword. Yeah, give me a sword. That's who Where I the sword at? Like Brienne. I imagine Brienne and as with like love oh, talk. Yes. And, she's uh, like, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, I love her. I love her. <laughs> I liked it too. Oh, but I do the same thing. The same thing. We go from like woodsy girl to like a master swordsmith. I mean, she didn't. They they at one point they told her they were gonna train her because the entire time she's battling, she's sort of blundering. The only reason she doesn't die is because she can't be hurt. Yeah. yeah. She gets fucked up, but she just heals from it. And in the end, that's why they're like. And then Kasha went to actually learn to fight with a sword instead of like falling on people because she was really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> falling, on, falling on people can totally be a power. Yeah, which she uses to her, you know, full advantage. But then in the end, they're like, maybe you don't want to trip on I just, And then, okay, so then we have, like, the other wizards, uh, who is Dragon, who is, like, amaz- uh, an awesome wizard. Falcon, who is kind of like a bitchy, kind of like Tom Hiddleston, kind of... Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. You, you know, right. I imagine Tom Hiddleston You're as right. him, uh, and, you know, just him it's being happy. Um, yeah. But I also felt like their interaction like led to nothing. Like I felt like he was flirting with her, but oh, no pasó nada. There was nothing, nothing happening. So yeah. he was just kind of one of those. Would you? That I want to know most about, which is Alusha the sword. Alusha the sword. Oh, it's guys, who we don't even get. To, that's the thing. We don't even get to see her in action. She like gets burnt to a crisp. You know, we see her casting a spell on her sword. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. Audience, audience, imagine Minerva McGonagall in her mid twenties. <laughs> but making yeah. swords. But you know what? And not taking shit that's from that's nobody. Her, nobody here plays Dragon Age. But if anyone's wa- if anyone watches oh, Dragon sorry. Age Inquisition, I imagined her as. Uh, People we don't. Uh, I forgot her Dragon Age. I forgot her name. Damn. Burn. Wait, what is, ah, what's her name? <laughs> okay, I gotta look it up because I it completely popped out of my head. Oh. Mm. But yeah, in my in my mind, it was like if McGonagall in her teen years had lived by a forest and had to aid a small village, because she's all oh my god. At one point, Agnieszka b- bumps into her and she's forging this sword, and they're just talking and she's not really paying attention. And then she realizes that she keeps like putting the sword in the fire and then hammering it and putting it in water and fire and hammer and water and over and over again. And she starts to wonder how many times you can do this to a sword. And then Alosha, because at some point. Oh, At some point in the book, people can... Cassandra. The, that's who I picture it as Alosha, as the sword I pictured her. Well, I just love that, that she's just she's just making the sword over and over and over again. Andrew. And Agnieszka's she like... She weapons, but she was... The sword was her name. The sword was her fucking name. So that was her <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Andrew. Shut up. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah. Where did what? Andrew is texting me. He's correcting me. He says, she made weapons, not only swords... The cannonballs and arrows were enchanted by her. Fine. Yes, this is what? true. She made other. She yeah. made the fact that you're not a lover in the library. <laughs> you just want to be here, and you can't. Okay. Look, Andrew. <laughs> she made other weapons, but which one had she been making for hundreds of years? The sword. The sword. <laughs> Basically, Alosha kept wrapping enchantments over and over and over into this sword until, and she said the shape of it was merely a suggestion and it was more magic than sword and it could only be used one time but it would kill anything that it cut. Which was not. He's texting. Which technically not true. He's (laughs) angry. You angered the library, Andrew! Oh no, what is he? He chose a a wizard name. I I, have angered the unicorn. He was the unicorn. (laughs) The Pegasus. I don't know. What one of those horses? One of those horses. There's a difference. Do you know that the way to catch a unicorn is with a virgin? Virgin breast milk. That's the only virgin breast milk. No, that yeah. that's the only thing they're attracted to. So, like, people would take like young virgins and they would set them out in the middle of the woods so that the unicorn would like come and lay his head on her lap, and then it's like, bam, caught you. Yeah, I read somewhere that they would like suckle at her breast, like what breastfeeding the- from a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> this is real. I looked. I also looked this up. I'm I'm not, I'm not, 
I got you. I got you, Andrea. I know what's up. Okay, so what you're talking about. We're talk about, which is kind of like, well, we talked about it already. But did you want? Did you guys want to say anything else about the setting or the world? I totally believe that this was a place. Yeah, this was, was a very well crafted world. I think because they, the author chose to focus on maybe three places at most, yeah. but went into very good detail, like. The, the tower, which is part of this village, and that had some good description in it. And the wood itself was a, a, a very it was a very large space, but the details were the same throughout. So the same kind of monsters and the same the same feeling. You got the same feeling of something watching you and wanting to be like and chasing I could you. See, like when she talk about like the wood sort of like encroaching on like the neighboring towns. Like like I could see that. I could see how that would happen and how like the towns would get. Place. Like it was just I didn't. I didn't enjoy, I mean, I did enjoy it, but I didn't enjoy imagining being there. Like, it was very uh, Snow White, you know, and that, like, such a hate forest. It was scary. It was a scary place. I didn't even want to picture it. It was scary. Oh, but it was so, it was because, like, as three ladies who are from Puerto Rico, uh, <clears throat> we, know, we know what it's like to grow up surrounded by, like, trees and nature and stuff, and I've always been able to go home and, like, take a nap outside, barefoot, on the grass, surrounded by trees. To me, I understood Agnieszka's point of view when it came to that because to me, nature's always been very comforting. I've, I've always felt very connected to where I come from and the trees and plants and the animals, it's all just sort of this security blanket that's always there. And then the author just turns it into this corrupt presence where yeah, it's always there, but it wants it wants to hurt you. It wants to like suck you in and and take what makes you a person and that uh so creepy so I know, I'm creepy I'm getting more nervous about these trees in my revenge you need to go um you need, you need to go like give it a water offering tomorrow just go, like water <laughs> I, I just like to I <laughs> just go water the tree a little bit and uh, my dad once told me when I was little that trees knew when I was picking their flowers or leaves and that I should always ask permission and apologize mm -hmm. and I still I still will if I need to cut something off of a tree or pick a flower I'll like apologize to it that reminds me of a story that I read by Roald Dahl the guy who wrote Matilda and the big friendly yeah. giant that guy? and uh, it was called it's a short story called the sound machine this guy he kind of like invents this like machine he puts it yeah. on, and then he like yeah. hears, yeah. he hears uh, he hears like ah! <laughs> it's like a little scream. And when he looks over, he sees like the neighbor is cutting roses, and exactly when she's cutting roses, like they're like ah. So I pictured that when I was cutting these flowers, I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot that story. It was so scary. No, yeah, my dad fucked me up with that because now every time I see any sort of tree or plant, and I have to interact interact with it somehow, I'm just like. Sorry about this. <laughs> I respect okay. you. Well, the last thing we need to talk about is the romance slash sex. We established we established that they had like a simmering kind of like chemistry, unspoken unless through magic chemistry. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's that's Sorry, what. Guys. So it was an unspoken chemistry, but it was like hot. Like he was a hot guy. Like his skin was like fire. And I know. Like, they call him the dragon for a reason. <laughs> Uh, 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 anyway, so, uh, and he's also, like, up in this tower. I mean, come on. So, who doesn't like a dude in a tower with a library? I like how they're, I, I like how they, when they cast a spell, they kind of, like, have to, like, sing together, and, like, it's the crescendo, and it, they're, uh, the first time, it breaks, right? It breaks, like, a, like it's blood, and they make out, and they're, like, nah, they, like, <laughs> together. but then it's, like, uh, uh, we need to stop. And it wasn't clear at first why he wanted to stop. It became clear afterwards when he was talking about the channel to the wood and the drinking of the water because he didn't want to be linked to the wood. I mean, and all the girls from the village were linked to the wood. That's what the I... The dragon has commitment issues, dear audience. He doesn't want to. The dragon can't commit. The dragon wants to eat the cookie, but he doesn't want to pay the bill. <laughs> he built her cookie. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's like a dozen cookies. He had like three. He doesn't want to pay for the dozen. This is a selfish piece of shit. God, dragon, Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, you don't even go so here. It comes up. To, it comes to a head, and when they they kind of like disconnect because she's got to go to court for Kasha and uh, 
the Queen's um, trial. Uh, and then oh, because they, anyone anyone who's been touched by the wood and anyone who's corrupted is supposed to be put to death. That's yeah, what the trial. That's is. what the trial was. We don't know. She, <clears throat> she runs away because shit goes down. People are slaughtered. Also, point my favorite thing in the book was that bestiary trap. How you read a book and it and you become the monster. It corrupts the shit out of you. Like oh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand when you read the bestiary. Did you become the monster that you were reading about? Yes. Is that what happened? Yes. Yeah, that was amazing. I thought that was so cool. So yeah. that happens, and uh, <laughs> I mean, go read the book. It's it's a it, it it's explained. So so then that was really cool. Was really, she shoots lightning at it. Shit happens, and she runs away. She basically <laughs> goes to, to the tower. She goes back to Dragon, uh, and then like they have like this moment, and then chapter twenty seven. Twenty seven. And I imagined her. She like makes a choice. It, SOC, I did like that. That was very unspoken. That the whole chapter was just her walking through the tower, and you know, with this like, like this music, and she's just like. Walking. And <clears throat> and he has he he has that defensive rug magic. Okay, have you guys watched Practical Magic? Have you guys? Yes. Practiced? Okay, you know the scene where the Nicole Kidman is like gonna hook up with. Uh, the Angelo guy, and yeah, there's like this weird song in the background. I totally pictured it like that, where she was like, mm, and she's walking, and then she makes it to his room, and he's like, what the devil are you doing here? And uh, stuff goes down. It's all snaky. I'm That's here. With his thumb. I thought it was cool thumb. that he he oh. had <coughs> Wait, he acting had, out his like. <laughs> he he My had God. um. Ah. I like that he had this big intricate carpet outside of his room that was a dragon, and she's walking to his room, and suddenly the carpet starts becoming a lizard and has scales and stuff, and she's just like, "Oh, this is cool, but like I know his room's right there, so I'm gonna go this way," and and the, and she just beats the trap, and so when she walks into his room and looks at him, and he wakes up, he's like, "What the? What do you do? What do you? How'd you even get in here? Like what? My she's magic!" Like, and then he's stop. like, <laughs> "Hammer time." <laughs> For real, fire meets gasoline up in here. He was so. Yeah. <laughs> and then they, she just like mounts him, and he's like, "But I'm so much older than you." And she's like, "Shut up, shut up, just stop, stop, shut up." Stop, stop. <laughs> she magics his trousers away. She's like, "Fuck this." I have a question. I have a question. Was Agnieszka a virgin? Was she a virgin? I yes, she was. I don't think was she. Was, I didn't get the impression that she was. Are guys? When have we read a book where they are? <laughs> I feel well, like... Well, girl cravings, she was totes. She was not, yeah. She <laughs> totes had had sex before. She's an English major hoe, that's what she is. I feel like she was, but it wasn't a big deal, or... Because... Magic or they were only Because they were only 17. Like, that's when the summoning happens and they get taken away, and before that, she was very tomboyish, dirty, and... Well, and she mentioned it. She specifically mentioned, like, being worried... About what the wizard did and how she like overheard her mom and her stories. Tasha, like what <laughs> happened? So, yeah, she definitely was. But I thought that I, she I takes that shit like a champ. She's just like, Mow. yeah, and that's why it should be. It shouldn't be that, like, like bathtub. Confident. I mean, <laughs> damn, the girl. She knew what she was doing. Yeah, yeah she's, she's just what like she, wanted. she was I a learned you. girl. She was a learned girl because she read children. Dear yeah. audience, if you read. Read up on it. Oh my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless no, you're you like, know why I'm doing that. You know why I'm doing that. But no, it gives you a bit of dear input. audience. If you are 18 or older, read up on <laughs> it. Exactly. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? I I was shocked into silence. Hold on. <laughs> so was he. Oh, and then afterwards there was like no cuddly pillow talk or whatever. I really but didn't get what yeah. he was doing with this team. Like I was trying to picture it. And I well, couldn't. I mean, I like, until well. like a cannonball came in through the wall. Fuck <laughs> 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 him. Because naked time is over. <laughs> we're under siege. <laughs> She's like, I mean, I guess we could talk, but I could also just go to my room. Oh, we're under attack. Oh no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, also confirms her suspicion about him taking girls because they're a channel to the wood. Very casually. Yeah. He literally, like, I basically feel like it was copy-pasted. That line was <laughs> like she's He said exactly what she thought. So yeah. I thought that was nice, but then the cannonball happened, so. Oh, oh well. 
If the, anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Oh, oh, I remember. In the, in the first chapter, I really, from the first chapter, I thought that, I thought that Kasha and Agnieszka were going to be a thing. She loved Oh, yeah, her. I wanted that. And I did ship them. I shipped them. I thought that, you know, she determined to... Kasznieszka! Kasznieszka. Kasznieszka. I shipped it. I thought it was... I, I just think that she's, like, such, like, an independent, like, strong, brave, like, like, I could never see her with someone like, like, Agnieszka. I just couldn't. Yeah. I did, I did like that they had, um... Like, I think they have a great friendship, but I don't think she'd ever date someone who was that, like, hesitant about things. Yeah. I did, at one point, though, <clears throat> dear audience... Um, when when Kasha is, is corrupted and Anishka has to release her, she does the spell called the Summoning Spell, which is the big, you know, Avada Kedavra version of magic in this story, except instead of killing, it reveals all truth. Like, it reveals anything that anyone's trying to hide. And they have this moment where their friendship is put to the test because they are confront with, with, they're mm -hmm. confronted with anything and everything that the other person has ever hid from them. So their jealousies come to light. Agnieszka being deep down jealous that Kasha always knew she was going to be picked and she was always preferred and always this beautiful girl. And Kasha always being jealous that Agnieszka would be able to grow up normally and not have to be taken by the dragon. And then when she is taken by the dragon, the jealousy that Agnieszka has this magic. And they come face to face with these like horrible, like dirty things that people try to hide. These, these parts of themselves that they didn't that they were frankly embarrassed to ever have come to light and they got over that shit and hugged it out and it was like chicks before yeah, dicks like and they were fine and it was great and I was so happy that that was a thing. Yeah, I like that a lot. Christina left, by the way. Oh, damn it. We lost her again. Do you know what I love? I love every time you say dear audience because <laughs> yet again, it reminds me of Jane Eyre. <laughs> dear reader. So like, dear reader. I married him. <laughs> I love that fucking line. And that's what I think of every single time you say to your audience. I'm married now. Oh, that was cute. I like that. Oh, it's just God, but I was so into the girl power message of this story because even, even it was all, like, yeah, the dragon was hot, but, like. No, that's what made me the happiest because I honestly thought it was going to be one of those things where it's, like, this is my best friend. But she's just the plot device until the real story starts. But then, like, she's not. Like, she's there throughout the entire book. And, and she's an important part of the entire book. Like, mm -hmm, definitely mm -hmm. fighting alongside her the whole time. And I love that. I Like, at several points, I remember stopping and thinking, man, like, I really like this friendship. You're back. Uh, <laughs> the internet is being really wonky, so I'm on my phone now. Oh, uh, I knew there was, like, a screen difference. You looked... There's a tonal. There's a tonal difference. You look like a Snapchat selfie. Hey. <laughs> don't ever complain about your lives if you have steady internet connection. Some people don't have that. Audience, dear audience. <laughs> now you're just you also, gonna say that on purpose to make me soon. Dear audience. Oh, Christine, <laughs> because while you were gone, I was like, oh, Tashi. Every time you say dear audience, I think of Jane Eyre, and like, dear reader, I married him. <laughs> Aww. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we what basically. Did I, miss? I missed like we, crucial seconds. Oh, uh, we basically were just talking about how we really liked the the sisterhood message of the story mm -hmm. and how Kasha so and Agnieszka just despite all of these horrible, horrible experiences, and, like, you know, it, it reminds me of, like, I do have my version of Kasha, because, Christina, I've known you for 20 years, and you... I'd go to the Enchanted Forest for you. Uh, I would go to the Enchanted God. Forest for you, guys. Dear audience. <laughs> That's for you, Andrea. Um, <laughs> Christina and I have known each other for, like, 20 years, so if there were anyone who would be able to look into my corrupted heart and be like... <laughs> Bitch, get out! <laughs> I'll ship it. She'd be like, bitch, I got some chili pie for you. Get out of the forest. I'd be like, Lord, I'm coming. <laughs> that strawberry peach pie you like so much. Oof, the strawberry apple with the crumble on the top. Mm. Whoa, okay. Oof. All right, we're back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so, uh, that's about it, right? I don't think we missed anything. We went, we went straight through my... 
through my little outline. Your checklist? Was, yes. Yay. I just wanted to make sure and that I, And I drank a Virginia apple in that a way. Oh. Right, last cheers for disconnecting. Well, I don't have any left. I can't pound this because this wine's very strong. Right, <laughs> I got work tomorrow, so. Me too, gotta teach them kiddos. Right. You need to talk the way they talk. I, I demand to have you say so, say one of the things that they say now. I just, what is it? Say, say a phrase. It. Come on. Like, it's like, you know the word bro, but they don't say bro, they say bruh. bruh. And then, and, and bruh. Like, bruh. things are like, I'd be Come like, on, that's savage. That's what they say. Yeah, but you don't sound weird dumb. saying it. You sound fine. No, but I can't, I'm saying it like super dorky. They say it in a way that's like, man. You're going to have to Snapchat cool. it to me because I need to see the difference. Okay. Come on, bro. I'll do that. I mean, it might be bro. a week. But I might also do it. Snapchat, it's still you can just for like two seconds. Well, <laughs> you can gone. start you you can start saying it and making fun of it, and then eventually it just becomes part of the thing that you say. Because I'll say stuff that I originally started making fun of, and now it's part of my regular everyday vernacular. Me saying lol, I'll say lol when I'm talking, and I'll do the gesture. And I started off making fun of that, and now <laughs> I'm just like the difference because in this case it's like. They're really. They're legit hood, basically. They're legit, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm not, and I and I know I'm not, and so just I, have them take you on as an apprentice hoodite. That's cooler. They they I, they have license. They have license. I did I did teach some of them to dance bachata today. Uh, Andrea, you just need to acquire a license to swag. <laughs> I can make you one. I can make you a license to swag. See, because you guys would fit right in, but I'm like. That's because I look 15 with this flower crown. That's what no, I mean you would fit in because you